that the material goodness and our bodies and are kind of jailed in this material realm and so it could feel very hard to go against the grain and the false ego in the body can make you react in discomfort but we're doing a great service to our soul. Okay, uh, if, if we get it so quickly, I'll, I'll read some of the Shastra command that we have. First thing that we thought of was Chaitanya Chaitanya. Kavraj Goswami says, Krishna Bhuli Sei Jeev Anari Bhakimu Adaiva Maya Tare De Sansara Dukh. So, if we're getting Sansara Dukh, are we doing Krishna consciousness? No, we're Krishna Bhuli since Anari Kal. Because since beginning this time, we don't know our true relationship with God, so it's very easy to think this is normal. Everything is normal, why don't I feel happy? So if you are not feeling happy in the material world, either you are a complete fool and you are even doing material life badly, or you are a Krishna conscious fool and you don't realize this is only Krishna chanting my sincerity. So that was first Krishna Shastra Pramad that we described the condition of those that cannot be happy without uh, other other thing that we, we, we came up with to address uh, sometimes we do feel happy, which is a false happiness was I don't know Shastra, but anyways one kind of a anecdote that we, we cite that there's uh, there's somebody who's running through a forest, uh, walking through a forest to hear a tiger. So they begin to run and then they fall into a well. And as they're falling into the well, they grab hold of a branch. And uh, and then they, they think, well, okay. And the tiger can't get me here. I'm halfway down the well, so I'm safe from the tiger. But down and they hear hissing and they think, oh, this is a dry well. It's just a pit of snakes down there. They're going to bite me in another hour between one, one catastrophe and another. And so then, as he's holding onto the branch, um, there's a bunch of bees, and here's a bunch of bees, and then kind of a sticky substance is falling on his head, and he looks up and he's all, oh, oh, there's a bee's nest, and there's honey dripping on it. He kind of like reaches over a little bit like this, and, uh, uh, and some honey lands on his thumb. So then he thinks, oh, it's not a bad way to wait for it. You know, maybe the tiger will go away, and the snake's dead, and they can't reach me, so it's not so bad, right? And then, you see, yeah. And then, and then, eventually, the tiger goes away, and even a friend comes with the rope, and he tells this way, hey, hey, no, 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 get a branch, poke the, uh, the beehive some more, I want more honey. <laughs> this is material happiness. Right? <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, I think it's very simple to just understand that material life is like an itch. It's pain, but you scratch it, and you think that feels good. You think that feels good, you're scratching something, you're just going to get worse. It doesn't make the pain go no, I think I think uh, I think that this this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam is better better message for us because we're thinking that we were thinking that we want to be God conscious, but we are very uh, foolish. Not very good. Maybe some people here will learn it, but it's uh first verse of Bhagavatam is that Teja Bhari Madam Yatayama There's three interactions and three modes of material nature can create many illusions. A very important point of Vaishnava Siddhanta is to understand that the material world is objectively real because it objectively has something in the material world. It's a real thing, but it generates it illusion in our minds because we're baby, so just like a child, they're in the real world, but they see things in their own way that is not correct. So, there is, uh, Bhagavatam is saying that there is an animal running into the desert, thirsty, and it sees a mirage, and this is what Bhagavatam has said, that because there's excessive heat in the desert, it creates an illusion of water. And so the deer is thinking, if I keep running, I'll reach the oasis, but there's no oasis. It's just going to get more thirsty, exhausted, and it's going to die in the scorching sand. So, this being our condition, 
Srimad Bhagavatam has said, Bande Mahapurushate Charanara Vindam. Takta Sudhusthita Suresh Taraja Lakshmi. Dhanishta Aya Rajasa. Mahapanapu, this thing that he's asking us to do, he's done it himself. This is Achar Prashar. He's, he's, he's done it. And he's running after us trying to say, no, 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 don't go that way. So, this is the, the inspiring message that we can give. Otherwise, my, my advice or the advice of Sri Guru is that you should read the Sri Krishna Namashtakam by Rupa Goswami. That should give us so much encouragement on the path of Sadhana Bhajan. To read the glorious of Sri Nam and think, oh, if I could just get some of that chanting this name, then I would be okay. Arriba!
Similarly, when we are put in this material world, our natural norm, our natural state is to be uh, the servant of Krishna. But because of exposure to all of this material world, we become uh, changed and we believe that we are ice or we are gas or whatnot. So this example is given. So our duty is to return to that natural state. Once we return, return to that natural state of being Krishna Das, then we can achieve happiness. So this semblance of happiness, as Dinamandu very nicely um, spoke, is fake happiness or semblance of happiness. But if we want eternal, true happiness, which is real happiness, then we must follow the process of Krishna consciousness.
But is Brahma happy? Because when Go Kumar, sorry, when Naraji approached Brahma, saying, You are the best recipient of the mercy of the Lord, Brahma said, No. <laughs> Honestly telling you, No. I am not. Because I get bewildered to see the past tense of Krishna. The best recipient of the mercy is Shiva, not me. So, Brahma, after seeing and checking on and testing Krishna in his past time in Brahma Lila. After he prayed for becoming a stone in Braj. Tad bhuri bhatyam iha janma ki mapatyam yad gokul ape karo ami rajo I want to become a stone in Braj. So position of Brahma is full of happiness. Full of happiness. But he is not happy. <clears throat> Why? He is lamenting. And he wants to become a stone in Braj. Where the maid servants of Braj, when they walk, they can strap their feet on me. And I get the dust from their throat to speak. If Brahma would have been happy in that position, he could have never ever prayed like this. That means there is another level of happiness. And what is, what is that? Not in any modes of severe nature. Forget about common, mode of ignorance, mode of passion and mode of goodness. There is no happiness in three modes of nature. It appears happiness, but on a very cross level. Even those who are in a mode of ignorance, they also enjoy and they are happy. But the enjoyment is restricted to very cross level. And that happiness comes to suffering. Then there is another level of happiness which those who prevail in the mode of uh, passion, they also enjoy it. But their enjoyment is also on a very gross level. But little more better, subtle from those who are in the mode of ignorance. But those in the mode of goodness, huh, their enjoyment level is too high. More subtle, because their body is subtle. Demigods, their body is subtle. And don't, they don't incur any sin. They don't incur any sin. Because <coughs> there is no gross body. And their subtle body and with a subtle intellect, they enjoy it. But that enjoyment is also restricted and very limited. So, even though there is happiness in three modes of nature, but it's on a very gross and, and subtle level of happiness. But there is another position which is called Vishuddha Sattva. Oh, sorry, Shuddha Sattva. Shuddha Sattva is that level where a sadhak, after crossing these three modes of nature, he attains that shuddha sattva beyond three modes of nature. And the happiness and bliss the sadhaka drives in that position is unparalleled, cannot be compared to any other happiness of this material world. Even beyond the happiness of Brahma, even beyond the happiness of Brahma, Shuddha Sattvas. Those who follow the footsteps of Vishuddha Sattvas. And who are the Vishuddha Sattvas? <coughs> the associates of the Lord. Lalita Vishaka, Sri Dham Sumal, Nand Baba Yashoda Maya. No one can become Nand Baba Yashoda Maya. No one can become that. But those who follow their footsteps, they are on the Shuddha Sattva. That's a, that's a state of, there's a position there one extract maximum bliss and happiness because there in that state there is no more so material nature it's so subtle in nature and there is no saturation there it's always and always happy because they are hundred percent Krishna consciousness hundred percent that's the position of Shuddha Sattva whereas if we see 
we know without Krishna consciousness, there is happiness. But that happiness is like a bubble, momentary happiness. Mukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakali Asham. Those who are running after material enjoyment, after liberation and perfection, Sakali Asham, they are always restless. Krishna Bhakta Nishkam. Krishna Bhakti is always Nishkam without any desires, material desires. Atev Sham. They are always very peaceful and blissful. So, whatever happiness we see without Krishna consciousness, we see, we see, people enjoy in this world. But go detail into their life history and you see that enjoyment is very momentary. And uh, even the richest person is very happy because we don't know the details, but if you ask him or her whoever, any person going to tell no, there is some suffering. But another very uh, different level of suffering. Even Brahma is not happy. What to speak of the richest person in the world? Even Brahma is not happy. So the ultimate happiness is in 100% Krishna consciousness. That's why he wants to become a stone. This is called 100% Krishna consciousness. Huh? So, it's a long question. But sometimes we do we, we do feel happy without it. <clears throat> yes, we do feel happy without Krishna consciousness. That happiness definitely, Bhagavatam says, definitely going to turn out to miseries and suffering. Inevitable. Definitely is going to happen. Also vice versa. Why are we sometimes disturbed and unhappy while practicing Krishna consciousness? Now this question has different levels. <laughs> because in the body of philosophy there is nothing wrong. Everything is two, three, four. You know, like in the Shankaracharya philosophy everything is one. <laughs> and Buddhist, Buddha philosophy everything is zero. zero one. <laughs> Shankaracharya is one. Yeah, everything is one. When he was a small child, his mother told, go and count how many eggplants in the field. Yeah. And he counted and came back. He came to his mother and said, mother, one, 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 one. one. <laughs> so, everything is one. <clears throat> but in Vaishnava philosophy, everything is two. Right? In Western philosophy, everything is to be master and servant. Nothing one. Those who wants to extract bliss, now again coming to the first question. This other level of happiness, one who wants to get merged in Levishesh means impersonal Brahm. In that fullness of the Lord. There's so much happiness. It's all bliss. But the point is, the person, the practitioner, practicing that means yoga, he gets merged into that refulgence of the Lord. To become bliss, not to extract bliss. <coughs> to become bliss is not a fun. To taste bliss is actually fun. They get merged into bliss. This is known as sushupti. Mukti. Liberation is compared to a sushupti. Sushupti means deep sleep. <clears throat> when everyone get tired tonight, they're going to sleep. Snoring and sleeping and when they wake up in the morning, it was such a wonderful sleep. I enjoyed my sleep. So when you realize you enjoy your sleep, when you woke up, when you wake up, mm -hmm. not when you're sleeping. This is the position of merging into impersonal brahman. You are in that bliss, but you can't taste that bliss. When you're in deep sleep, you can't enjoy your deep sleep. Only when you wake up, then you enjoy it. Yes, it was a good sleep. So this other level of happiness. 
so therefore in that happiness one become happy one become happiness but one cannot taste that happiness understand so even this is a fake happiness the best happiness is two master and servant eternal master not ordinary master shri padar par said kamaadi kati na kapita parit dodi desha he said i always served one master toward my life but he never got satisfied with me and it was been asked to him who is that master he said calm but your desires lust i always serve i always serve the master never gets satisfied is always ordering me serve me more serve me more serve me more so then i finally decided to reject this master uh, and to make someone else my master and moment i changed my master i mean krishna is my master he is so nice alp seva prabhu bahu kari mani i perform little service to him he said oh you done so much for me oh you offered a tulsi leaf to me patra pushpam param to you you offered one flower to me wow oh you did you just offered a cup of water to me oh you did obeisances to me he immediately gets satisfied so i rejected that previous master who is useless and never gets satisfied and my krishna is my master who immediately gets satisfied <coughs> so this is another level of happiness beyond nirvana beyond liberation beyond impersonal brahm so both this philosophy is here once for a time a small child came to me and he said maharaj i can very easily defeat buddhism monism and my avad shankar chara is so easy with my simple school going mathematics i said really are you philosopher he said no it's so easy you don't need so many scriptures he said how come he said so simple one is superior than zero and two superior than one <laughs> <laughs> monism is zero buddhism is zero shankar chara is one and vaishnav is two Zero one two. So easy to defeat that. <laughs> so everything in Vaishnavism is two: eternal master and eternal servant. We are Jiva Sarup Hai Krishna Nitya Das, eternal servant. And Krishna is eternal master. <clears throat> huh. So this is two. But Gaudiya Vaishnav philosophy goes further, far than two. Radha Krishna, they are two, right? And they become one. <laughs> Radha Bab Duti Solita, Nami Krishna Solita, from two to one, and then from one to five. <laughs> Panchata to Atmakam, Krishna Bhakti Rup Sarupakam, Bhakta Vatar Vatakam, Namami Bhakti Shakti. Or in other words, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Shankar Chaitanya, Shri Vasudevi. From two to one, and from one to five, and then from five multiple because Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakt Kinda. Then there are millions and trillions. <coughs> so there is nothing one. <coughs> Therefore, answer to every question is not one. There are so many from many perspectives. So now I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> Why we are sometimes disturbed and unhappy while practicing Krishna consciousness? Acha, <clears throat> why we sometimes disturbed and unhappy? This question was been asked to Shri Bhakti Nath Bharati Goswami Maharaj, and he smiled and he said, "Oh, this question is not very much because if you fall in Krishna consciousness." Actually, following Krishna consciousness, you can't be disturbed and you can't be unhappy. It is for those who are not following Krishna consciousness. It's for those. If you are Krishna consciousness, means performing bhakti nicely, then there is no point of disturbance and un unhappy mood. <clears throat> and even if disturbance comes, <coughs> even if disturbance comes, 
one pray for those disturbances to come again and again because that enhance one's happy and he gave example of shikunti devi what she asked for more disturbances more calamities should come on my way there's a higher level of krishna consciousness and when it was been asked to kunti devi why you want these disturbances he said because every time we got this disturbance you come and save us and protect us and the disguise of protection i get to see you i can have your darshan krishna said wait a minute aunt kunti aunt of krishna i i never came to i never come to protect you save you she said i have account of this can i hear this and kunti devi said yes not one or two times so many times she said can you please tell me then kunti devi said yes vishad mahabali purusha darshaya वन वासे वन कशे कशे मृदे मृदे अनेक अस्त्रातो द्रोणु अस्तु चावि रक्षति <coughs> चावि रक्षति हां व्हेन ही वाज गिवन पॉइजन केक व्हेन वी वर गेटिंग बर्न इन द लैक हाउस व्हेन द्रौपदी वाज गेटिंग डिस्ट्रॉयड इन द असेंबली एंड विद सो मेनी बैटल्स एंड सोल्जर्स इन द बैटल फील्ड ऑफ कुरुक्षेत्र महाभारत and just now you protected the home of putra <coughs> this one not one or two there are so many occasions and in the disguise of asking protection from you we i want to have your darshan that's more important i'm not asking wealth and i'm not asking calamity actually i just want to have your darshan that is only my sole purpose and then krishna smiled felt the embarrassment and shy because his aunt kunti to whom he is paying obeisances every day today kunti devi is praising the lord praising krishna so <clears throat> if any disturbance comes on the way believe me if you not come across this this experience i can't share this is personal and it happens in the life of so many sadhus in good times we actually don't pray this from our heart but in bad times this always day and night prayer comes from the heart and there are many devotees i met they they share this spirit to me that man i actually pray for that day to come again when i was in problem then i said why because even though i was stuck with some miss happening but actually i was praying a lot and sincerely from my heart weeping and crying krishna 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 from my heart and that chanting never happened again never happened again that was a very special chanting i felt so much close proximity with krishna that krishna is just right in front of me and he is uh, looking looking at me <clears throat> so there is no point of disturbance in krishna consciousness but if there is any disturbance devotees welcome those disturbances if the devotee is actually following krishna consciousness mm -hmm. but on the pretext of krishna consciousness if just one feeling so i want to become a religious person just following some duties this is a different case but actually krishna consciousness means welcome disturbances are welcome to come yes that enhance one's level of bhakti i'm not saying any mishapping should come to anyone But devotees they see and they perceive everything equal, prosperity and disturbance together. That at that point one feel or one can test what is my sharanagati surrender mode to Krishna. Because in the limbs of sharanagati, rakshadi di vishwaso gopte tim varnam tatha. 
I heard many devotees saying, I am praying to Krishna, praying to Krishna, he is not hearing. Is he deaf? How is it possible? He can hear every subtle sound. You don't even speak. Whatever in your heart, Krishna can hear it. Then why is not hearing my prayers? Because lack of shardhalati, surrenderness. And there are six limbs in shardhalati. Anukulasya santalpam prati kulasya mivarjanam rakshiti vishwaso gopitim vartam tatha atmanikshepa kartanya. Six. That means <clears throat> taking a vow and promise. I will do all those activities which are favorable to bhakti. How many of you are following this? I will only accept those things which are favorable to bhakti. I will reject all those which are unfavorable to bhakti. This follows the life. Rakshati Vishwasu. Form determination. That Krishna is only my protector. Is it possible? It's just word for you. Lip, lip service. And Gopitya Varman Katha. Krishna is only my maintainer. Do we believe that? We don't believe 100% in any of these limbs of Sharnagati. Honestly speaking. I am speaking this. Doesn't mean I am following this. True. It's so difficult even to come to this level of accepting those things which are favorable to bhakti and rejecting those which are unfavorable to bhakti. Because intentionally we want to get disturbed. That's the nature. Because of gross understanding, we want to get disturbed. We don't want to get happy and blessed. Because if we really want to get happy and blissful, then we have to be very sincere in Krishna consciousness, which we are not. We are lacking surrenderness. We are lacking that. And then we form faith. Krishna is my protector. Where is that? No. And determination that he is only my maintainer. No. I think dollars can maintain me better. So, this is Shraddhanatam. If we are giving, what happened? Giving. If we are really Krishna consciousness, then there is no disturbance. Everything is equal. The same value. So, here the answer for in 5. Team 5 P. Team 6, please come. Team 6. Good luck. Oh, we have senior most person here. So, um, this question I first thought 
Um, it was a um, very easy to answer, but um, actually it's not quite so easy. The question and see back here. What is a higher goal than going to the abode of the Lord? The highest goal is uh, to give pleasure to the Lord and to serve the Lord. Um, going to the world of the Lord is one of the opulences in the world you can achieve. Getting the same body features of the Lord is another one. Uh, being a friend of the Lord and so on. There are different opulences and the world you can achieve. But there's something higher. Uh, we do want to get um, the love for the Lord. It is more important to love the Lord than to associate with Him or to be His own person. On the other hand, those who are in the abode of the Lord, for them there's really nothing higher and they want to be there. None of the residents in the spiritual world would want to come here. Only if they get asked by the Lord, will they come here? An um, example of that is our Srila Prabhupada, who said that Krishna asked him to come to this world uh, to preach. So I thought the answer um, to our question the whole particular situation uh, was given by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita at the very end, where he says that he who preaches the supreme secret, the science of devotional service that he had explained in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, that uh, this person who preaches this to his devotees, this confidential message, is most needed. And then Krishna says, there will no one ever be more dear to me in this world than he. So that is a pretty clear answer. And we also have uh, examples when Lord Ram uh, decided that his pastimes were finished and he would go back to the spiritual realm. He told Hanuman to stay behind. When Lord Krishna left, he asked the of Krishna Dharanta to stay behind. Shukadeva Goswami then spoke the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the literary incarnation of the Lord. So there are examples of um, devotees who do something higher than that is considered higher than going to the abode of the Lord. Our Srila Prabhupada brought Krishna consciousness to the West. Once Srila Bhakti Siddhanta had the Parikram, and they would go to all the different holy sites. And um, one of the disciples had been a pujari at one of those temples for many, many years. So the Parikram party had gotten there, Big Panda was set up, and Shia Bhakti Siddhanta was talking. This uh, story you will find in Buddha Prakriti's uh, book, Shia Prabhupada, a friend to all. Uh, a very wonderful story. Because Shia Bhakti Siddhanta, he paused, and um, he looked in the uh, direction of that devotee and uh, he said I'm going to make a prediction now and he said that one day one of my disciples he will go and take this Krishna consciousness throughout the whole world <clears throat> and so in this uh, particular Pujara he could not figure out why <clears throat> he would Ashirabhati Siddhanta would look in his direction and he turned around and he, he saw how she was up. So, <clears throat> because um, the um, Acharyas, the devotees of the Lord, they know what the Lord wants. On the first meeting that Sri Prabhupada had with 
Shri Bhakti Siddhanta he told him to go to the best and preach personally. So um, this was more dear to Krishna um, than having Shri Prabhupada be in his boat because he had sent him here to do that service. So the answer would be that especially in this world, because this is how Krishna uh, phrases this um, verse in the Bhagavad Gita at the end, there's no one in this world more dear to me than he who preaches this confidence message to my devotees. So um, our conclusion was that for all those who are in this world, definitely there is something higher than the abode of the Lord, and that is pleasing the Lord and developing love for the Lord. But for those who are in the abode of the Lord, already they do want to stay there they don't Krishna is glorifying his devotees, expressing that even if I want to give some liberations to my devotees, saying Salokya. Salokya means? <coughs> Salokya means? Go on the same plan. To go into the same planet where the Lord resides. So what is the enjoyment to be in the same planet? There is no proximity to the Lord. You know, just like two days back I was in an example. I was coming from India to America then somebody said, Oh, you're going to America? I said, yes. Then you're going to shake hand and hide it. Because he also just stay in the same land. Is it possible? Similarly, those who go to Vaikuntha, want to go to Vaikuntha, Salokya Mukti, they have no access to the Lord. What is the use of going to the same world? <clears throat> then Salokya Shashti, having the same openness of the Lord. What are you going to do having the same openness with the Lord? You have no proximity to the Lord. Salokya Shashti Samitya. Samitya Mukti means you have proximity to the Lord. And what is the use of the proximity to the Lord if you have no service to the Lord? Just like Putra, he got killed by Krishna. Aho Bhakiyam Sandakala Sotam Gita Sapayati Sadhvi. Neve Gati Jatri Chitam Tatam Anyam Kamba Dayalam Sharanam Vajrayana. I did a mistake yesterday while describing that Pundrik Gita in his pastime that Mukunda Prabhu he uttered a verse from Bhagavatam. So I uh, wrongly, I said that he described the form of Krishna. But then Krishna Prabhu corrected me later saying, No, it was the compassionate mood of Krishna, and this was the verse. And thank you so much for that. Then I understand Bhagavan. How generous is Krishna is? How generous Krishna is that Putana, demon, came to kill Krishna in the guise of a mother. <coughs> Krishna killed Putana but gave her motherly like destination in his abode. She is like a nurse there in Golokanda. Motherly like destination. But the tragedy is she didn't guard. She got Samipe, close proximity with Krishna, but no service with Krishna. That's more frustrating. Yeah. She's not actually engaging, isn't it? No, no service there. 
because it's not anukul in a Krishna Shila. It's not anukul in a Krishna Shila. It's particular in a Krishna Shila. In favorable mood to Krishna. So one can only get the service of Krishna when there is anukul in a Krishna Shila. Means with a favorable mood of serving Krishna. Not anukul in a Some wrestlers like Charu Bhushtik in the arena concert. They were there to fight with Krishna and Krishna was enjoying this fight because he also possessed so much strength. But you cannot say the Chara Mushti is serving Krishna. Even though Krishna is enjoying. So every enjoyment of Krishna is not termed as service to Krishna. Because their, their mood was unfavorable. They want to kill Krishna. That's why it is not called as service or pleasing Krishna. Yes. But how can anything or anyone be in the spiritual world, including you mentioning the Vaikuntas, the different generations, if they're not actually serving Krishna? Don't even that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so when Putana, she got motherly like as mission leader, this is more frustrating because Krishna is playing in the courtyard and Yashoda Maya is doing some household activities and moment Putna in that form there tried to hold Krishna on her lap to serve immediately Yashoda Maya comes and take away Krishna you know it's time for feeding Krishna so she is there and she is watching her it's more frustrating you don't have Krishna in front of you ok you don't have Cake, ice cream in front of you. That's not a problem. But if there is ice cream and you're about to eat and someone just snatched from you, it's more frustrating. And this is what happened with Putana. So she is not getting any service there. So what is the what is the compassion there? <laughs> in one sense. She's in close proximity with Krishna, but there is no service mode. And that's why these muktis are compared, divided in separated into two parts mentioned by Sri Vishnu Chakrathakur Sukh Ashwarpa and Seva Ashwarpa Some people they want this Muktis is liberation for their enjoyment oh, I want to be in the abode of the Lord I want to have the helpless as Lord I want to be the close proximity of the Lord etc. But there is another category here they also want to go to the world of God and have the same hopeless of the Lord, but for the, with the mood of serving the Lord. So this is bona fide one. Even going aboard of the Lord with the mood of service. But just I want to go there because this material world is terrible. It's not a good place to stay. I am suffering so much here. I don't want to be here. That means there is no point of service of the Lord inclusive in this. The intent is that I am suffering and I don't want to come back here. But there is no kind of service of the Lord. But there is another level, another category of devotee who only want to go to the abode of Lord to just serve Him. Not saying that I am suffering and that's what I want to do. So two, two different categories. So Krishna is saying even though I give this liberation, five kind of liberation, but my devotees, the Amanada Karananti, even though I want to give them, they say no to me. How you can say no to Krishna? Isn't this offense? Krishna is giving you some prasad, say no, keep with you. That's offensive, right? No. It's not that what Krishna wants to give you, you have to accept that. He wants to give you liberation. I don't want it. Give to someone else who want. I want to give you material enjoyments. I don't want. You're giving me this prasada. I don't want to accept this. I want to ask something which I want from you. As Gurudev said, once upon a time in one householder in Delhi, he said, oh, my dear daughter, you serve me so much. I have this potency. I can immediately bless you and you can go to Vaikuntha. Next day. 
Would you like to have this? No. She said no. You said, I am giving this spoon. Why you don't want? She said, because I learned from you. We don't have to go to the bathroom. Then, what is your aim? She said, I only want to become Radha Dasya. Uh, I learned from you. Only want to become the best servant of Radha Dasya. And God has smiled. And then he said, yes. Learn how to say no to Krishna. <laughs> Not that whatever he wants to give you a set. No. No, 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 no. Okay, what is Radharani has to give you? Krishna, we can say no. Radharani is. That's very okay. Tricky and offensive. Krishna profile is different. Radharani is our uh, worship. The most worship. <coughs> Is there any example? How to say no to Radharani? If Radharani wants to give any more, yes, our child is teaching us. Sri Ragnarath Das Goswami is teaching us this. Saketumam namastu namastu nityam dasyastumam rasastu rasastu sattva. Sri Ragnarath Das Goswami is saying, by seeing my loving services, to my Radharani, if she is willing to make me her Sakhi, her friend, to come, Raghunath, I want to make you my Sakhi. No, no, no. I don't want this. Then what do you want? I don't want to become your Sakhi. I only want to become your maid servant. Dasas to mom, rasas to rasas to sakhi. This is our body question. So going to the abode of the Lord is very High destination, but that's not ultimate. There's another matter. In whatever way and whichever condition you want to keep me, Krishna, I'm here to serve you. Because getting attaining Krishna is not the goal of life. Krishna is not the prayer. What is the prayer? Krishna Prem Prayodhan. That's the worst in Chaitanya Chaitanya. Krishna is not a Prayodhan. Krishna Prem is a Prayodhan. Good morning. <laughs> I was thinking, why is it so dark? <laughs> Krishna Prem is Prayodhan. Not Krishna is a Prayodhan. We don't want Krishna. And if anyone hears this, he says, what are you guys doing? <laughs> All day you are shouting and screaming, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> and now you are saying we don't want Krishna. <laughs> yes, because of the other level. The different levels. It's not, if you just always want to be the ground floor or first floor, that's your problem. But we have elevators who can take you to the rooftop, crossing all the levels. So we don't want Krishna, then what do you want? Krishna praying is a prayer means the loving service of Krishna is of Kriyaja. Very wonderfully, Sri Sananda Prabhu described the example of Anuman. When Ravan was killed and Sri Ram came back from Lanka, coordinated as the king of Ayodhya, now he is giving farewell to everyone. Vivishan, this Pad, Pad means the position of the king of Lanka goes to you. Sugri, <coughs> this pad means this position of becoming the king of King Purusha goes to you. Yeah. It's looking everyone and giving their positions. Pad, pad means position. You know, just like Nitai Pada, Kamala. When he was giving to everyone, he looked, he glanced towards Hanuman. And Hanuman was in tears and he said, don't even say anything. <coughs> Hanuman said, everyone received their part, their position. One part, I received two part. And everyone was wondering, what Hanuman got? He said, I got two part. Means two lotus feet of Ram. Everyone got one, I got two. <laughs> that means two lotus feet of Shama. And 
I don't belong to any kingdoms, I don't belong to any territory, I have no family. Sugriva has family, Vibhishan has family, they all can go. My family is service of the divine, what to speak of? Shri Sita Ram. That's only my family. The serving God, the praying Seva. So therefore, <coughs> Sri Ram, when he went to Saket Dham, he told Hanuman to stay back. Even though he was a little sad, but thinking this is the order of my Lord. And where can I get the proximity and the remembrance of my Lord? He is speaking and hearing the pastimes of my Lord. See, he told Hanuman to stay back intentionally. Another example, what was the second one? Shundev Goswami. We hear in Sri Anandrindavan Chantu. That parrot shook. He witnessed all the pastimes of Radha Krishna. And when Radha Krishna, when Krishna wants to go back, he's a boy for the Vrindavan. He told Shukdev to stay back. He told Shukdev Goswami to stay back. He was a little sad, but considering this is the order of my Prabhu, he stayed back and he started describing the pastimes of Radha Krishna. Feeling the presence of the Lord in the past times. Now, trying to wind up with a very important point. If you can understand this, and if you can feel and realize this. It is so difficult to try to focus and manage on this. It is so difficult to renounce the enjoyment of this material world for us. But forget about that. Coming to the level of <laughs> later, after 30 minutes. Coming to the level of Acharyas like Krishna Prabhupada, Krishna Prabhupada, and all other other Acharyas. They were in high positions. They had all opulences. They had all fame. But they rejected all those, considering them as insignificant. Bhaktva Turna Mashesh Mantalapatim Shenim Sada Tutchava. Insignificant. And they become renouncers. They become renouncers. But this renunciation is very small, insignificant. And there is another level of renunciation. As Prabhu just said about Hanuman and Shukdev Goswami. Giving up, understand this, giving up the physical presence of the Lord. Not giving up internally with his mind and emotions, but giving up the physical presence of the Lord with the mood of pleasing the Lord. The Shad Goswamis, Shiru Goswami, Snatra Goswami, they would have stayed in Jagannath Puri with Rishi Chakana Mahaprabhu. But Mahaprabhu told them, go to Vrindavan. And he gave four instructions, right? Not elaborating on this. They would have stayed with Mahaprabhu requesting and begging him, Mahaprabhu, please don't send me. I want to be with you, I want to witness your pastimes. As all other associates, they got this opportunity to dance with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kirtan Vinas. Seeing the pastimes of Lord Jagannath. Means Mahaprabhu dancing in front of the chariot of Lord Jagannath. And all other goddess Krishna pastimes and everything. They were in proximity with Mahaprabhu. They expected complete bliss. But just to please Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, their worship above their ish, the Goswamis, fulfilling the order, obeying the order of Mahaprabhu, they went far with Mahaprabhu. This is called highest limit of renunciation. Giving up the position. Raghunath Das Goswami saw so much opulence, rejected that. 
Sanatana Goswami and Goswami, Prime Minister, rejecting that tradition. But this renunciation is insignificant in comparison with the renunciation of physical, giving up the physical presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in order to please him by fulfilling his orders. It's so painful. Anything that is so, we can't even, we can't even, 0.1% we can do this. Not possible. Their life and soul is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they are giving their life and soul to obey the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Giving his personal presence. So they are not participating in any other pastimes. But in part distance, Mahaprabhu is always concerned about them. How is Rupa Sanatana doing? How is Rupa Sanatana doing? Always Mahaprabhu is meditating on them and they are meditating on Mahaprabhu. That part is <coughs> Therefore, this is a big level of renunciation and very high level of service to your child. The biggest sacrifice. Keeping Hanuman and he's giving up the physical presence of Lord Ram to obey his order. That's more important than physical presence. We are the followers of the Goswamis. And similarly, the followers of the Goswamis means we are nothing. I'm speaking about our Acharyas. Shri Prabhupada, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, whose favorite place of stay is, was Sri Vrindavan Dham. Vrindavan is my home, his life and soul. He never want to leave Vrindavan Dham. Sitting in Radha Tavara Temple, Ah, meditating on Ashtakali Lila of Radha Krishna. But he went out from Vrindavan Dham, giving up the physical presence, the proximity of Vrindavan Dham, and going overseas. Where? In this hellish planet. Yes. Everything is enjoyment, enjoyment and enjoyment. No temples, no sadhus, no darshans. And imagine what is in Vrindavan. Every corner, every street, Harikatha, Kirtan, Rade Rade, temples, darshans. This is another level. Giving up the holy world for the sake of serving the Vishnu Chitra and Mahaprabhu and propagating the message of Radha Krishna around the world. This is top of the <coughs> I'm just elaborating of what Prabhu just said. I'm not saying it's anything different. As he said, Krishna told in Bhagavad Gita, one who preached about me, he's very dear to me. These are examples. A higher level of adaptation. And similarly, you know, Amakshira Gurudev was Asakti Dar Vasati Sthale. So much attached to Brajmandal. So much attached to Brajmandal. Never wants to leave Brajmandal. Never wants to leave Govardhan Radha Kuru Shantra. But, leave this. Even at the last age. At the age when people, like her devotees, crossing 65, 70, they say, now is the time to retire. We've done a lot in our life. Really? <laughs> and Gurudev and Shri Bhagavan, they started in this age. <laughs> they started in this age because there is, there is a, a level of great inspiration. I want to die serving the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu Krishna acknowledged your intent. I will die anyway. But I will die preaching about Mahaprabhu, the mission of Mahaprabhu. I know. This is what Sri Gurudev used to say. It's so hard to live Sri Vrindavan Dham. But it's so important to live Vrindavan Dham. To spread the mood of Vrindavan Dham in everyone's heart. 
And this is what he did. He accomplished this. This is more than going to the abode of the Lord. This is more than that. Because even if we pray, this is good prayers. I want to go to the abode of Krishna back home. This has been taught by our Acharyas. But this is one level, this other level. I don't want to go because of I am feeling suffering here. I want to enjoy it. So there are different levels. So that's why I said it's not in one or two. There are many, many levels. And perceptions differ from person to person. Go to Man and Day. 740. I thought it was only 7 